The 1930s was an uncertain time for the nations of Europe, especially for countries in Eastern Europe, as they were threatened by Soviet and German aggression. During this time, Romania maintained good relations with France, Britain, and Poland, and had imported numerous aircraft from them. Romania sought to purchase German aircraft, some of the most modern fighter craft of the time, as well. Germany was very focused on itself in the 1930s and turned down many Romanian offers to purchase modern BF-109 fighters. In the 1930s, Romania was suspicious of Germany and its dictatorial government and did not want to be economically dependent on Germany. To eliminate dependency on foreign military equipment, Romania initiated domestic aircraft production. To support its army, Romania desired a plane that could perform both reconnaissance and light bombing missions. They had previously relied upon the French Potez 25 and the Potez 540 for bomber support, but those designs hailed from the 1920s and early 1930s and were quickly becoming obsolete. To modernize its air force, Romania designed the IAR-37, which first flew in 1937. Three different versions of the plane were produced, with the differences being the type of engine used. Due to its connections with France, Romania produced a licensed copy of the French Gnome Rhone Mistral major engine called the K-14. This 870 horsepower engine provided the AAR-37 with decent speed and acceleration. Unfortunately, supply of the K-14 engine stalled after production began in 1938 due to the prioritization of other aircraft engines, and 50 IAR-37s were ultimately produced. Romania instead imported the weaker, yet reliable, BMW 132 engine from Germany, which produced 700 horsepower. This new variant, labeled the IAR-38, also included minor changes to the fuselage. Finally, in 1940, an improved version of the K-14 engine was developed, providing 960 horsepower. IAR-37s with this engine were called the IAR-39, and 255 of this new variant were produced from 1940 to 1944. Romania invested resources in upgrading the engine of the IAR-37 to enhance its speed and maneuverability, but inherent obsolete features of the plane limited its overall potential. The fixed landing gear was a main issue, and although omitting mechanical landing gear saved production time, it significantly increased the drag. The fact that the IAR-37 was a biplane limited its speed while simultaneously offering improved lift. The IAR-39 could reach a maximum speed of 336 km per hour and offered a climb rate of roughly 9 meters per second, which was decent for a light bomber. Additionally, 24 12 kg bombs could be carried, totaling 288 kg of bombing capabilities. Three 7.92 mm machine guns were used, one that faced forward, one used by the ventral gunner, and one for the tail gunner. So, three crew members were required to operate the plane. The IAR-37 and its variants first saw action during the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941. The majority were used in reconnaissance roles due to their vulnerability in combat, but they were still used to bomb enemy machine gun nests, artillery, and truck convoys. They saw major action in the southern part of the front, such as in the battles of Sevastopol and Stalingrad in 1942. Later, IAR-39s were used in the last futile attempt to halt the Soviet advance in Ukraine in 1944, suffering incredibly heavy losses against modern Soviet anti-aircraft guns and fighters. In late 1944, Romania witnessed a coup and switched sides. The surviving planes were used against the Axis powers in the final years of the war. The IAR-39s fought up right until the end of the war. The last recorded mission was on May 9th, in which IAR-39s dropped leaflets on German positions in Bohemia, signaling that the war was over. After the war ended, these planes continued to be used in training roles. 
These planes suffered heavy losses against the Soviets on the Eastern Front due to their slow speed, inadequate maneuverability, and lack of armor. In response to these issues, in 1941, a prototype for a new aircraft was developed, called the IAR-47. The IAR-47 was a monoplane that had an improved engine, landing gear, and bombing capabilities. Still, test flights in 1942 proved to be unsatisfactory when it was realized that, although the IAR-47 had good maneuverability, it could not compete with modern Soviet aircraft in terms of speed. Production phased away from the IAR-39 and IAR-47 by 1942. Romania instead focused on its modern fighter, the IAR-80, or the licensed design for the German BF-109. To complement the reconnaissance and light bomber force of IAR-37s, Romania desired a medium or heavy bomber force to support their operations. Romania had at first tried to purchase foreign models of aircraft, and they found support from Italy. In 1937, Romania imported 24 SM-79B Italian medium bombers. Romania modified the plane to fit their production and military needs. The largest modifications adapted the engines and fuselage. While the Italian bomber used three engines, the Romanian design, called the S-79B, used only two engines. The two K-14 engines generated a total of 2,000 horsepower. The central engine was replaced with a glass nose area with a forward-facing gun mount. On this version, one 7.92mm machine gun was fitted in the nose, and three 13.2mm machine guns were available for the three rear gunners. A total of 1,500 kilograms of bombs could be carried. The relatively weak engines propelled the plane to a maximum speed of 415 km per hour, which was lackluster by the time the bombers first saw action against the Soviet Union in 1941, and this led to heavy losses. In response to fast-moving Soviet fighters, a modified version of the S-79B was designed. The new model, named the JRS-79B, included two Junkers Yumo 211 DA engines of 1200 horsepower each, and an improved fuselage to provide excellent aerodynamics, allowing the plane to go 431 km per hour. Eight of these were built by Italy and transferred to Romania, and another 36 were built in Romanian factories. Aside from the engines, the main difference between the JRS 79B and the S 79B was extra stowage space for bombs. Earlier S-79Bs were phased out and used as training aircraft as the modern JRS-79B replaced them. Despite Romania's best efforts at modernizing the S-79B, problems regarding its speed and defensive armament remained, and losses on the Eastern Front became increasingly irreplaceable. By 1943, the war looked bleak for Romania as the Red Army advanced into Ukraine. Efforts to improve the JRS 79B were intended to halt the Soviet advance. Beginning in 1943, the IAR JRS 79B 1 was produced and used upgraded engines, namely two 1400 horsepower engines propelling the aircraft to a top speed of 436 kilometers per hour. The plane also had five 7.92mm machine guns and a powerful 20mm cannon, providing better defensive armament against Soviet planes. A total of 36 were built by Romania. In August 1944, Romania made peace with the Allies and declared war on Germany. So Romanian bombers began attacking Germany and Hungary until the end of the war in May 1945. Overall, the Romanian S-79B and its later variants were not all that much more impressive than the Italian SM-79 base design. Although the fuselage was partially made out of wood, the heavy weight of the rest of the plane meant that the craft was not very fast or maneuverable. They suffered heavy losses against modern Soviet fighters, and the small number of produced aircraft did not have a large impact on the war.
By the time Romania joined the Axis in late 1940, its inventory of fighter aircraft was lacking. They had tried to obtain foreign models of fighters, namely the BF-109 from Germany, but Germany insisted that it needed all it could get for its own air force. The country obtained a number of British Hawker Hurricanes and Polish PZL P-24s in the years prior, but they were aging rapidly. Countries accelerated fighter research and production to meet the demands of the war, and Romania lacked a modern fighter design that they could produce consistently. During the interwar years, Romania had obtained numerous Polish, British, French, and Italian aircraft designs. Romania intended to implement the Polish PZL P-24 as its main fighter. At the end of the Polish campaign in September and October of 1939, many Polish aircraft were evacuated to Romania to prevent them from falling into the hands of the Germans and Soviets. Consequently, supply of the PZL P-24 stopped, and Romania needed a more modern fighter design to replace it. Romania took inspiration from the various foreign models it had obtained to design robust fighter aircraft. First flying in 1938, the new IAR-80 took inspiration from the Italian SM-79's wing orientation in the P-24's cockpit design. The light aircraft used a K-14 C-32 engine of 960 horsepower, providing adequate propulsion that satisfied many pilots. A bubble canopy was installed, which provided the pilot with exceptional visibility over the nose of the plane. To test its capabilities against foreign models of fighters, the IAR-80 took part in an international aircraft competition and performed much better than a leading German design, the Heinkel HE-112. Firepower for the first IAR-80 design was lacking because only two 7.92mm machine guns were used. The problem stemmed from the fact that Romania relied on foreign armament imports, mainly from Belgium, and Belgium was unwilling to give away a large supply of weapons due to the chance of war with Germany increasing, and they needed all they could get for themselves. Indeed, production of the IAR-80 stalled in May 1940 after Belgium's capitulation. In 1940, Romania was becoming increasingly more economically dependent on Germany. Romanian politics also shifted, and they signed the Tripartite Pact in November 1940, officially becoming Germany's ally. As a result, Romania received more armaments shipments from Germany, and production of the IAR-80 could continue. After Romania manufactured the first 20 IAR-80s in 1940, it was quickly noticed that it lacked qualities of other modern fighters. A modified design, called the IAR-80A, was introduced in early 1941. A lack of firepower had plagued the IAR-80, so a total of six light machine guns were used on the IAR-80A that provided good firepower against Soviet fighters. Prioritization of the ADA and a new, developing shortage of machine guns meant that machine guns needed to be taken off IAR-37s and IAR-79s. Additionally, the IAR-80A used an upgraded engine of 1,025 horsepower. Armor plating was added around the cockpit and a bulletproof windshield was installed to protect the pilot. Despite the engine upgrade, the added weight of the armor and machine guns slightly reduced the plane's speed to a maximum of 316 miles per hour. The added external fuel storage meant that its 715 mile range was excellent. IRA-80s and IRA-80As saw service against the Soviet Union during the Axis invasion in the summer of 1941. Unsatisfactory performance against Soviet fighters prompted Romanian aircraft designers to modify the IRA-80A. The main issue was a lack of firepower. A new model made in 1941, the IRA-80B, included longer wings to accommodate six 13.2mm heavy machine guns, providing for formidable firepower. It also improved the radio technology to increase coordination between pilots. The added weight of the new machine guns limited the range of the IRA-80B to 580 miles.
Again, Romania suffered from a lack of available armaments. 13.2mm machine guns needed to be stripped from IRA 79s and equipped on IRA 80Bs to accommodate the modifications. As a final note, Romania attempted to upgrade the IRA 80 and its variants by using a German made 1600 horsepower engine. Importing this was impossible, however, because the demand was too high in Germany so that none could be spared. A number of other German engines requested by Romania were turned down. The IAR-80B was a satisfactory fighter by 1941 standards, so Romania began putting effort into designing an up-to-date dive bomber to replace the obsolete IAR-37. Rather than creating a new design from scratch, Romanian planners decided to use the IRA-80A as a starting point for their dive bomber. The resulting IAR-81 had provisions for 275 kilograms of bombs. To the dismay of many pilots, the awkward bomb rack slowed the plane's speed down to 290 miles per hour. An upgraded version, the IAR-81A, used 13.2 millimeter machine guns, and the IAR-81B used a mix of 13.2 millimeter guns and 20 millimeter cannons. The final variant was the IAR-81C, which used upgraded 20mm cannons with a higher muzzle velocity and rate of fire. The IAR-81 series had been developed domestically because Romania was unable to obtain Ju-87 dive bombers from Germany. Eventually, Romania obtained a license to produce BF-109s and Ju-87s, and the production of IAR-80s and IAR-81s was gradually phased out. In 1943 and 1944, Germany delivered a number of BF-109s and Ju-87s to Romania to replace the losses of the IAR-80s and IAR-81s, but the newly obtained aircraft could not replace the devastating losses endured on the Eastern Front. The IAR-80 and its variants played an essential role in defending Romanian airspace during the war. Romania stored large quantities of oil reserves, making it an essential German ally. This also made it a target for Allied bombers who sought to disrupt Axis oil production and halt German military operations that were so dependent on oil. America launched Operation Tidal Wave in August of 1943, a bombing raid that targeted oil facilities in the Romanian city of Ploiesti. IAR-80s took part in defending the Ploiesti oil fields in August 1943. Romanian and German planes destroyed numerous American bombers with remarkably few losses of their own. In 1944, the Allied bombing campaign saw more success in Romania because Romanian air defenses and fighter plane supplies slowed. Romanian oil production in June of 1944 was 20% of its production in February of 1944, proving the success of the Allied attacks. Later, in the summer of 1944, the United States launched a massive attack on Romanian oil refineries in Ploiesti. 77 P-38 Lightnings planned to attack the oil fields, and Romanian IAR-80s and German BF-109s quickly rose to the skies to intercept the Americans. One Romanian pilot recounts, I saw their crazy dives, quick rolls, reverse turns, and inverted flying, always with just brief bursts of fire to save ammunition. It was an incredible sight, but also a drama for the lightning pilots, who, at this low altitude, were inferior to the ever-present, nimble IAR-80s. The exact losses suffered by the Americans in Axis aerial formations is unclear, but it is certain that more P-38s were destroyed than IAR-80s. Still, the Axis had an advantage of fighting on friendly territory with anti-aircraft batteries firing at the Americans.